Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm back with five all new fall decor DIYs. As always, each project is a budget friendly. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you do, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Now let's go ahead and get started. For the first DIY today, I'm gonna to be creating fabric pumpkins. This is the fabric I'm gonna be using. It's this really pretty plaid fabric from Hobby Lobby. I'm loving the burnt orange color for fall this year. And I'm also gonna be using this wood pumpkin just to use as a guide to trace around on my fabric. If you don't have a pumpkin shape like this that you can use to trace, you can always just print one from the internet and use that. So I'm just getting it all set up on my fabric and then I'm using a marker to trace around the pumpkin. I did fold my fabric in half so that when I cut it out, it will be two different sheets of fabric. So then once I'm done tracing it, I'm just going in with my scissors and cutting it out. And like I said, I did fold the fabric over so that when I cut it out, I have two pumpkin shapes. Then I'm hot gluing the two fabric pumpkin sheets together. I placed the hot glue around the very outer edge of the pumpkin and then just press the two pieces of fabric together. If you don't wanna use hot glue, you can always use fabric glue, fabric tape, or you can sew them if you're good at sewing. I, on the other hand, am not, so hot glue is my best friend today. I did leave an opening at the very top to fill my pumpkin, and I am filling it with polyfill. You can get polyfill at pretty much any craft store and places like Walmart sell it as well. I filled my pumpkin to the stuffiness <laughs> that I wanted it to be, which I do like a pretty full pumpkin. And then once I got to the very top, I glued a little bit more together, but I did leave still a very small opening and that is where I'm gonna be placing my stem. To create my stem, I am using three of these branches. These came from Hobby Lobby and I'm using hot glue to attach two of the branches side by side. And then the third branch, I'm gonna be hot gluing right in between the other two branches over top. I'm then placing the branches in that top hole of my pumpkin. And once I get it all placed where I want it to be, I'm then hot gluing the fabric around the branches. To add some detail to my pumpkin, I'm using two pieces of this rope trim. This is from Hobby Lobby. And I'm hot gluing the ends of that at the very top of my pumpkin and next to the branches. And then I'm having that go down and around the pumpkin where it curves up on the very bottom of the pumpkin. And then when it comes back around on the other side, I'm just cutting the rope off. And again, just hot gluing that at the very top. And I did the exact same thing with two more pieces of rope trim on the other side of the pumpkin. Then I'm adding some floral. This is a wheat floral that I've had in my stash for a while. And I thought it would be really cute to add this yellow color to the top of the pumpkin. So I just cut the wheat down a little bit and then I added small pieces of it around the top stem of the pumpkin. I then added some more florals. I'm not even sure really what these are. These are off of a fall stem from Hobby Lobby, but I just really like the color and I like the texture of these. So I added that to the top of the pumpkin around where I just added the yellow wheat. For the last little detail to this pumpkin, I created a raffia bow and then I just glued that at the top stem of the pumpkin. What I didn't get filled is I did end up adding another raffia bow that's already pre-made with a little button on it from Hobby Lobby right over top of the raffia bow that I just created. This is what the pumpkin looks like all finished. I did end up making a larger one as well. These were so easy to create and what's great about these is they are perfect for using scrap fabric that you already have at home. Now moving on to DIY number two. For this project, I'm gonna be using this cute little wagon from the Target Dollar Spot. It was $5 and I just think it is the cutest thing and I wanted to add a few little extra details to this piece. I'm also gonna be using this little bit larger of a dowel rod. I did cut it down into two different pieces. The longer piece is four and a half inches and then the smaller piece is one half of an inch. 
I'm also using a tumbling tower block from Dollar Tree and as you can see here I've already taken my drill and drilled a little divot in the end of it so that my dowel rod will fit inside of that little hole. Then I'm taking my folk art chalk paint in the color rich black and I'm painting my little Jenga or tumbling tower block from Dollar Tree and then also the two pieces of dowel rod. I'm then attaching my block using some hot glue to the bottom of my wagon, but I'm leaving where I've drilled the little divot sticking out from the front of the wagon. Once I have that glued, I'm then going to be attaching my dowel in that little divot hole that I've already drilled. I place the hot glue in the hole and then I press down my dowel inside of the hole to attach it. Then for the very last little piece of dowel, I'm just attaching that at the top of the larger one and I used hot glue to attach it and I just placed it at the top and this is going to be the little handle to my wagon. Then it was time to create a sign to go on the side of my wagon. I am using this small little scrap piece of wood. This did come from Dollar Tree in an assortment wood pack that I got a while ago and I'm just painting it with that rich black chalk paint. I let the paint dry and I did create a little sign on my Cricut to go on this piece of wood. It just says Farm Fresh Pumpkins. If you don't have a Cricut to create this, you can always use stickers or just hand write this on your piece of wood with a marker. I then hot glued my little sign on the center post of my wagon. Then I'm going to be adding some of this hay from Dollar Tree. This is one of the little mini hay bales that you can get there. I did take my pliers and cut off the little wire that was around it because I did want to have the hay just like spread on the inside of my wagon. And this stuff is super messy, but I think it was worth it because this turned out really cute. So once I have all of my little hay inside of the wagon, I just place some mini pumpkins inside of the hay or over top of the hay and I did end up adding a few little pine cones as well and this is what my wagon looks like all finished I only did a few little changes but the ones that I did make I think made a huge difference I just love how this turned out and as you can tell I did switch out the pumpkins for ones that were a little bit more colorful before we get into the third project today, I do want to let you know that I teamed up with my good friend Lisa Kennedy, Dollar Mom, for today's video. She's also going to be creating some fall DIYs over on her channel. So once you're done watching mine, make sure that you head on over to Lisa's channel to check out her fall projects. I will have her information and a link to her channel down in my description box. If you guys love budget friendly home decor, then I know that you're going to love her channel as well. Lisa is so creative and I just love everything that she makes. Now moving back into today's projects for DIY number three. For this one, I'm gonna be using this wood block. This one did come from Michaels. It is from the Art Minds brand. And then I'm just painting it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I'm also gonna be using this larger piece of wood. This did come from Hobby Lobby and I've already cut mine down to 12 and a half inches. I'm also painting this piece with that same plaster color chalk paint. I'm also using these three arrows. These did come off of a sign from the Target dollar spot and I've just had them sitting in my craft stash for a while. So I figured I would use them for today's project. The first one I'm going to be painting with the Folk Art Acrylic Matte Paint in the color Pueblo. And then for the second one, I'm going to be painting it in the color Vintage Mustard from Folk Art. And then the third arrow I'm painting with the color True Burgundy also from Folk Art. I am using another scrap piece of wood. This one is 7 inches long. I forgot to mention that the arrows were 8.5 inches long. For this piece, I am painting it with that same plaster colored chalk paint and then I let all the paint dry and for this project, I did use my Cricut and I created this first one that says Harvest Farms. Just really simple and I transferred that onto my block that I just painted. If you don't have a Cricut, you can always use stickers or just hand write these words on with a marker. 
For the orange color arrow, I did the words that say pumpkin patch. For the vintage mustard, I did hay rides. And then for the burgundy colored arrow, I did the words apple picking. I then took the arrows and placed them onto the larger like block that I had already painted and just kind of spaced them out where I wanted them to be with the harvest farms at the very top. And then I just used hot glue to attach each arrow and then the sign at the very top. Then it was time to start adding some detail. So I took two strands of jute and wrapped them around the very top of my sign above the word harvest. And then the ends of the jute I just stapled to the very back of the sign. And then I did the same thing again with two strands of jute, only this time under the word farms and just wrap that around and use my staple gun to secure the jute in place. I then created a really simple bow with this mustard colored raffia that I recently picked up from Hobby Lobby and once I had my bow made I cut the tail ends of the raffia to my desired liking and then I hot glued that bow in the top left hand corner of the top of the sign. I then added a little button to the very center of my bow. Next, it was time to get my pole assembled. So I placed hot glue in the very bottom of my block, like stand piece, I guess you could call it. And then just placed the pole on top of that. I am gonna be using these three little mini wood pumpkins. These are from Hobby Lobby and I'm painting all three of the pumpkins with the folk art matte acrylic paint in the color Pueblo. And I just did one coat of paint. And then for the stems of the pumpkins, I did them in the folk art paint in the color raw sienna. I was finally able to find these little mini hay bales from Dollar Tree and I thought this project would be perfect to finally use them. So I just have them placed at the very bottom of my sign and I'm hot gluing each one of them down into place. And then over top of the hay bales, I'm hot gluing all three of my pumpkins. And I did add a little pine cone just for some extra detail. And this is what the piece looks like all finished. This one was so easy to do and it definitely is a statement piece. I am gonna be using this for years to come. Moving right along into DIY number four. For this one, I'm gonna be using this unfinished wood palette pumpkin from Dollar Tree. I've already removed the hanger that was on the top of the sign. And now I'm just painting on my folk art wood tint in the color Walnut. I paint on a good amount and I am working in sections and then I'm just wiping away the excess wood tint with an old rag. I'm also using this mini wooden crate from Dollar Tree and I'm doing the same thing as I did with the pumpkin. I'm using my folk art wood tint in the color Walnut, just painting it on and then wiping away the excess tint with a rag, and I did this to the entire crate. I placed the pumpkin onto the crate and got it spaced exactly right on the back to where they lined up, and then I just used some hot glue to attach them together. Then I'm using some Spanish moss also from Dollar Tree. I'm just placing it inside of my crate. And then I'm gonna be using some of these really pretty dark and light yellow flowers. These ones I believe are from Hobby Lobby, but they might be from Michaels. So I just took some of them off of their stems so that it was easier for when I'm gonna put them in my crate. And then I'm also using some of these mini little sunflowers. These ones are from Hobby Lobby. And I did use my pliers to cut them down again so that they're easier to place inside of my crate. I then just started placing them in the Spanish moss and I ended up adding some corn stalk pieces around the flowers and then I also added a few little pine cones as well. Next I'm taking this a piece of fabric. This fabric is from Hobby Lobby and I just cut a long strip of it and then I'm wrapping it around the stem on top of my pumpkin and then just tying it in a knot. I'm also gonna be using some raffia. I took a few different strands, wrapped it around the stem of the top of the pumpkin, and then just tied that into a double knot. 
then to make sure that my fabric stays in place and to cover up the holes that were already in the top of the pumpkin I just hot glued the fabric over top of those holes and then for this project I'm also going to be using this grateful word cutout this one did come from Hobby Lobby and I painted it with my plaster color chalk paint I did lose the clip where I was doing that so I'm just letting you guys know where I got this word cutout and what I painted it with so I'm just using some hot glue on the back side of the cutout and then I'm placing it in the top left hand side of my pumpkin and I did end up adding a little raffia bow with a button that is also from Hobby Lobby. This is what it looks like all finished. I think this one is so rustic and cute and it was really easy to do. Now for the fifth and final project today, I'm going to be using this glass jar from Hobby Lobby. It was $3.99, but then I got it half off of that, and it did come with a cork in it, but I just removed that and I'll be saving it for later. I took a piece of jute and I tied it around the very bottom of my jar, and then I'm going to just start wrapping the jute around the jar over and over, making sure that I hold the jute really tight when doing this, and then just keeping the jute at the bottom half of the jar. Once I get it wrapped around a few times, I did take a little bit of hot glue and then just secure the jute into place. And then I would continue just going around and around and around again until I got to the very bottom. And then again, just used hot glue to secure that jute into place. I'm also using these wood letter beads to spell out the word fall. I'm taking each bead and stringing them onto a piece of raffia. And then once I have them all strung next to the last letter L, I am tying a double knot to make sure that the letters stay on the raffia and don't move around. And then setting that aside and then taking several more strands of raffia and tying them around the top of my jar and I tied a double knot and then just cut off the excess ends that were super long. Next I'm taking the wood beads and the extra little raffia piece next to the letter F. I strung it around the raffia that I just tied around my jar and then now I'm taking that strand that was still attached, I hope this makes sense, and I'm putting it back through each one of the beads and then just tying that off in a knot to hold all of the beads in place and to now have it attached to the raffia that's on the jar. And then for the last step, I ended up just adding some fall colored floral from Hobby Lobby. This is what the jar looks like all finished. I think it looks super high end and it was really easy to do for only a few dollars. By far the easiest project in today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing. Please be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And please don't forget to go check out my friend Lisa's video to see all of her fall DIYs. And please let me know in the comments down below which project from today was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching.